we find that if there is an increase in state funding, um, what happens is that in the two-year sector, let's first um, look at the two-year sector, there's a higher likelihood of bachelor's as well as post-baccalaureate degrees. They also have higher student debt originations, not lower, because they are doing more education. Because they are going on to higher studies, they actually take out more student debt. But even though they take out more student debt, because they're doing higher education, there actually is lower likelihood of delinquency and default. There is a higher likelihood that they will own a car or they will own, own a home. There is a lower likelihood of delinquency also pertaining to mortgage and auto loans. Uh, on the four-year sector, we do not see as much effects. We actually see they, have, they do have lower student debt originations and the lower time to degree. But other than that, things pretty much remain the same. It is important to point out here that this any positive shock would affect the two-year students more positively. So there is kind of a differential effect to these uh, two sectors, which also kind of indicates that if there are declines in state funding, that would actually affect the two-year sector even more adversely, considerably more adversely than the four-year sector. Let's bring David and Sue into our conversation. David, can you kick us off? Sure, yeah. Well, thanks uh, Thanks for having me today. It's really great to be here with all these distinguished panelists. What I think we really need to think about in terms of who pays is, again, not just the price that students are paying, but what they're getting for the money. And that's where I think the federal government really comes in. The federal government does have the power of the purse. The feds, unlike the states, can borrow money to finance worthwhile investments. And yet, historically, in this country, we have this kludge-like operation where um, Students basically get Pell Grants and loans, they, they get money from the federal government to pay for schools, and then they go to largely public institutions that are controlled at the state or local level. So I think that partnership model always has to continue, but we ought to think about something more systematic than just giving out essentially vouchers. Pell Grants are essentially vouchers that students can take to a school of their choice. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but we ought to supplement that with some type of what I would call a matching grant structure where um, the federal government supports spending by states in directly into public institutions of higher learning so that they can provide a higher quality education at lower costs, so they can potentially make college free without um, diluting the quality of it um, by decreasing legislative support at the state level. We have been tracking over time the extent to which students who are experiencing these challenges are actually accessing support. If institutions were to be held accountable for anything in the real college survey reports, I think it's this that they should be held accountable for. Connecting their students to supports is key. And as you can see here, very small numbers of students who are dealing with problems actually applied for things like unemployment, SNAP, or even emergency aid. To see only 15% of students here apply for emergency aid is particularly distressing. Now, why is that? Well, a third of students said they didn't think they were either eligible for emergency aid or that it was unavailable. We know from research that part of the issue there is colleges don't always tell students about the availability of emergency aid. Um, we can also see some really important things like with regard to unemployment insurance, 10% of students didn't know it existed. 9% of students didn't know how to apply. With SNAP, that number grows higher. So this tells us about some areas where we could lean into making some changes that might very well connect students to some additional support. Right now, it seems that when people are weighing um, go to college or not, they certainly don't seem aware of the fact that if they make the investment in college and it doesn't pay off, then they'll be able to have access to this forgiveness loan forgiveness through IBR or reduced monthly payments. And that seems critically important. So kind of in practice, what that would mean would be to um, make income-based repayment the default repayment regime for all student borrowers. And ideally I'd like to see it happen through um, paycheck withholding so that it's really just an automatic process that, um, that you know, students don't have to navigate any sort of system to be able to engage with. You know, we want metrics that are clearly tied to outcomes we think are unambiguously good for students, but are 
basically outside of the control of institutions, except through what institutions do to educate their students and get them through the door. And so I, I think it's maybe it was on purpose that I showed two particular types of outcomes on my second slide, looking at um, loan repayment rates, which is capturing how much progress students are making towards paying back their loans. And in doing so, it is capturing sort of things about how much students are earning they took on relative to the earnings they were able to get from their college education. And so both of those things, the, the cost of college and sort of how, how much students get out of college are things that are in part under college's control, um, but are clearly good outcomes for students too. And then the other metric was tying um, earnings of former students to a threshold based on earnings of high school graduates. And the nice thing about that type of metric is that if you have this benchmark against a, a particular group, high school graduates, which we can think of as sort of on average, the, the counterfactual for college students, during economic downturns, those students also experience um, sort of the, the negatives associated with a bad economy. And so that benchmark adjusts with economic conditions. And like loan repayment rate, how much a student earns after college is in part um, attributable to the education that they got, but it's clearly hard for a school to manipulate um, through ways that don't involve improving quality. 